Hey guys, I'm Michael, and this is Fanatic Bills. There's been a lot of weird things going on lately, so I was thinking maybe I should wear this for protection. Or... No, the audio, the audio is probably going to... Is that better? Yeah, it's probably going to be better. Let's go with that. This is our 1971 Triumph GT6 that we've been working on since June of 2014. It needed a lot of help, okay? There's been a ton of work into getting rid of all the rust that was slowly returning this car to whence it came. The last episode, we got the leading edge of the windshield, the A-pillars, and the floor cross members taken care of. This time, we're going to dive in and strip off all the remaining high build primer and body filler on the shell to see what we're really dealing with here. While looking pretty good on the whole, there was a small section on the rear that required attention. Something sharp and heavy must have made this hole, so it's out with the angle grinder to make it even bigger, followed by welding in a patch of new metal. A smooth off with a flap disc, and it looks more like something we can work with. The door striker plates were the next part to come off, evidently for the first time since the car was built. Even after trying assorted penetrating oils, heat, an impact screwdriver, hammers, bigger hammers, threats, and a stern talking to, it was apparent that most of the screws holding these on were going to need drilling out if we were going to have any hope of removing them. These plates were simply painted over during the last <coughs> restoration of this car, and while that may make them aesthetically pleasing at first, Paint really has no hope of lasting, as these have metal-on-metal -metal contact every time you close the door. We'll look into replacing or getting them plated later on. With them out of the way, the B-pillar can be completely stripped down to bare metal and inspected. Thankfully, everything's looking good. A great surprise to some of you, we are not in a constant state of winter here in Canada. In fact, these days our summer weather in Ontario is perhaps more brutal than the snow we get, mainly due to the humidity. For this reason, we pushed hard to finish off the removal and surface prep of the body shell so we could get a coat of rust converter on it and put an end to the corrosion once and for all. Flash rust is real. It may seem like a simple job that we should just gloss over, but it took weeks to get the shell fully stripped down so it's great to have the steel finally neutralized and protected going forward. Although sandblasting may have been faster, the mess it makes is ridiculous and some of the filler was nearly a half inch thick. Strapping discs, wire wheels, and dust masks got the job done. The passenger rear quarter hasn't been treated just yet, as first we need to do a bit more work to it. Firstly, removing this blob of lead that in all likelihood was put there by the factory 49 years ago. We don't have much experience working with lead, but we are at least intelligent enough to know that you really shouldn't breathe it in. We opted for a propane torch and a screwdriver to persuade the stuff off the car. Although some may extol the benefits of lead over modern body filler, and we're not really disagreeing, we nonetheless want this spot gone as it's obviously hiding something, and that something is, of course, a nice big dent with no rust hole, furthering our suspicion of it being a factory job. About a foot away from that is the next issue. Back in episode 5, the passenger side quarter panel managed to get a bit warped. Let's not dwell too much on which idiot managed this, let's just get on with the repair. Well, repairing it again, actually. As much fun as it could have been playing a song on the oil can panel, we didn't really want that, and I tried my best to heat shrink the highs with our welder and a wet rag to remedy it. Sadly, what you see is the result, and it was just going to be better on the whole to remove the area and replace with new material. We decided to do the same for that area that was dented. Did I ever mention before that we really should have gone with complete replacement panels instead of patches? Yeah, that would have been good. Hindsight and all that. At least this was less expensive at the end of the day. Our time comes cheap. Replacements were cut out and carefully bent to follow the contours of the surrounding panel as best we could. The small one went on first, followed by the slightly less small one. Like with the windscreen area in episode 6, tacks were placed every inch or so to make sure the panels were level to the surrounding surface, and the patches were intentionally a bit smaller to leave a gap for welding. Slowly, slowly, catch a monkey couldn't be more true when it comes to welding panels like this. Heat control is key to not have it warp, like it did last time. After finishing it up with the grinder, we'll have to see how we feel about this later on. I'm not sure I can live with myself if we just leave it like this. It's better than it was, definitely, but somehow, both of these rear quarter panels just make me feel a bit sad. On the other hand, I'm afraid if we drag out any repairs back here any longer, all the gasoline in the world may be gone by the time the car gets on the road, so let's just move along to the next step. 
Even though it's never going to be visible, we decided to also weld up the pinch seams around the door openings for additional strength and weatherproofing, just like what we did everywhere under the shell. One small bead at a time is piled up while moving around to help keep heat under control, and afterwards the faithful flap disc helps smooth them off so it's essentially a single piece of material now instead of two or three. Both sides got the treatment, obviously, and quite a bit more time was spent with wire wheels to completely clean out the interior of the car in preparation for more rust conversion. Mm, that looks a lot better, and thankfully no surprises were uncovered. Now, we still need to come back to the firewall at a stage and address a few areas there, but there are some changes coming that will require us to wait a bit longer and see what happens. So other than that, the shell is done for now. We're not professionals, we're pretty average amateurs at best, in case that wasn't incredibly obvious by now, but from 10 feet away, the car is looking decent. I think it's finally time to move on to the doors. And what on earth has been done to them? Not only is there the obligatory body filler, but somewhere in there are supposed to be drain holes. It looks like the previous restorer just took some black silicone caulking and smeared it all over the place. The bottom of the frame is pretty crusty looking too, so I have a feeling I know what's coming next. All right, so the body is in really, really good shape now. So we've actually got the next exciting step to push on to, which is reskinning the doors and fixing up the frames while we're at it, which is gonna be a task in its own. We're gonna start by buzzing down the sides where the, uh, the skin is folded over. And there's a couple little welds at the top which need to be cut through, and then this should just lift right off. As with the B-pillars, the doors need the screws and bolts retaining the hinges removed. The bolts came out easily enough, and fortunately my fancy impact screwdriver did the trick this time around for the screws. It's amazing how having the right tools can change a job from taking an hour to a minute. So we've cleaned back this side here as you can see, and actually the metal doesn't look too bad up to, uh, up to this kind of spot. So if we left that, left that much metal and then cut this off, that should be okay. However, now that we've flipped it around and ground down the inside of it, it's actually a bit of a different story. And we've got all this really deep pitting. Deep, deep pitting right up into the corner in that spot. And then you can just see it all the way across there. So, we're probably going to end up actually replacing the whole base. In an attempt to keep both sides moving together, the next door received the same treatment. It's just that easy. This is how we roll. The whole project's gone this easily. <laughs> yeah, the whole project's gone this easily. All right, well that's the garbage part. This is the so-called good part. Although this frame does appear slightly better, we have decided to cut off the entire bottom as we did on the other side, as now is the time to do it. A not inconsiderable time with a wire wheel later, and we have this. We have come to a love-hate relationship with wire wheels. They serve their purpose, but after months of picking the things out of your hair and clothes and carpet and pillows, they tend to get on your nerves a bit. The good news is that the rest of the frame looks in great condition, so let's throw some converter on it. Oh, and the hood was also stripped down. Gosh, this was a lot of work. It's a small car, but the hood is almost half the entire body. Unfortunately, clearing the filler off this revealed a few more problems than we had hoped for. Not only were the small dents we knew about on the bulge actually holes, but there was more of them than we thought. The wheel arches too had seen better days. Ooh, yes, lovely. Turning our attention back to the doors, the old material removed was used as a guide to help us design the new replacement, and after getting creative with some clamps and a hammer, as we didn't have a brake large enough, 
the pinch seam was bent up appropriately. Some time with our favorite tool, and the patch is now married to the door frame. As you would expect, our next favorite tool was deployed to level it all out and beautify the join. To finish this corner, we decided to weld in the remaining bit after having the rest in place, rather than try to bend it as one piece ahead of time. The flange is slightly oversized right now to make sure we have enough material for the door skin to crimp over, and it would have been a nightmare to try to form it, especially with only our basic tools and no shrink or stretcher. The backside might be a bit uglier because of the weld, but the strength is there, and some high build primer will smooth it out later on. So we had just got to the point where I said to Dad, the door frame's rust free. And then we discovered this. You can see that there's this other piece right here. And basically the water will run in down the window, go in behind, and sit right in here. There's a little gap there, but not quite enough. So this is the top of the door, but it just, just enough of a nook that over the last 40 years, water can rust in it. Thankfully, after finishing the removal of all the old paint, it was the only spot needing repair. So we tried to weld up those holes and couldn't. This one here isn't too bad. But this piece here, we ended up just chopping out because that's what it looks like in behind. This area here started off when we were cleaning the paint off, started off as just a little pinprick like that. You took your poker and you went right through in that area. So we kind of chased it to the other side to see what it is we're dealing with. Here's what we've got. By design, they got a little spot weld here with metal on top of metal. And what we've got is this whole area underneath here. We already knew we had water problems back in here. That's where we were drilling holes and trying to create drain for things in the future. So what we're thinking we're going to do is probably just cut right off here and just get that whole area out of there and remove this problem spot. Sometimes it's fun seeing how weird of a patch you can make, and I think this worked out quite well really. One of the rusted holes was able to be welded up due to the strengthener providing a back to weld up to, but the rest of it just needed tidying up, rust converting, and then the new patch could be welded in and tidied up as well. With that, this door frame is finished and the whole thing can get a coat of converter. The passenger side still needs going over, and both of the skins need to be installed, but I think we'll leave that for another time. Tune into episode 8 when I drill out a lot of spot welds, Dad drops a bolt, and we find out we may have made a bit of a mistake. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy what we're up to and want to see it before anyone else, consider supporting us through Patreon. I'm making YouTube my full-time occupation now, and your support is very appreciated. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get behind-the-scenes updates, and make sure post notifications are on so you won't miss episode 8. See you next time. So let's go prior off, and we shall have... D ruined doors. Duh. Duh. This is, that's a French. Yes. <laughs>